good day. I'm going to be making a recording to discuss the upcoming essay that is due this Sunday, June 20th. We're going to talk about what you need to understand, how to approach it, what the topics involve. I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. I know that during the summer you really do not have a great deal of time available to you to be watching longer videos. So when you go to the home page, this is what you should see, and then here are the modules. And when you click on the modules, give it just a moment. The first one that will come up, of course, is the Start Here module. Uh, and then under the Start Here module, a couple of points for you. I do have for you some details about submitting a paper and turn it in, uh, and also how to find feedbacks on the essays once they are graded. So you want to make sure that you've looked through these. And then, of course, you want to scroll down, and you will see the essay module. If it's closed for you, you just click on the cursor, as I'm sure you found out. Underneath this, I have several different examples for you. An example of a work cited page, because you will be expected to do some research for this, so you will have to uh, understand how to cite sources. I also have for you three different videos to discuss the, um, well, actually two videos, uh, and the Purdue uh, Online Writing Lab, uh, that if you'll click on it and then open it, it will take you to Purdue Al, which is the Online Writing Lab, and it explains MLA formatting, what it looks like, how to do citing, all the details here you'll see over here, all this aspect here, and we'll show you a video, uh, a couple little points to pick up there, but you'll see the details here, and so it has the creative work cited list, but it also has all about MLA style that you can look at, how to do work cited, um, the sample work cited pages there, uh, so you have quite a number of details to help you with the uh, idea of formatting of an essay, hopefully you already know how to do that. But then also, under this module of the essay, give it just a moment so it'll click back, I do have you a couple of videos that will walk you through the format of how to make sure your essay should look once you finish writing it. And then I have an example of an essay that is supposed to open here. There we go. Um, you, of course, create a header with your name, last name. Uh, then, of course, this is how the heading looks, name my name, course, and the date, uh, and then you'll see how uh, the essay looks. It is You have a title, whatever it is that your title is going to be. You uh, tab over once for each paragraph. You'll see that. Uh, when you use information from a source, you are expected to put your citation in. You'll see here's one from Cunningham, and other details are added. This is from another source. Uh, here's from another source, and you'll see the paper itself continues and goes through here. Um, this, the Ten Commandments, actually should have been tabbed over one more time. Uh, it's not done quite the way it should. When you block, you get tabbed twice. But then you go through, and you'll see there's more citations. And then here at the end of the essay, you'll see the work cited page. Uh, alphabetized. Cunningham, DeNova, and Pace. Uh, the title is here. This title right here should have been italicized. Um, this title should have been in quotation marks, as should this one. Uh, but you'll see that these are details that are used, that they've used these for the, for the essay itself. And so this gives you an example of how your essay should look. It's just about the right length. Uh, and so this gives you an idea of how it looks. Now we're going to talk about the topics, and then we'll talk about where to find information, not only in your textbook, but elsewhere. So here are the essay topics, and when you click on this, the assignment comes up, and you'll see here's the actual assignment, and then down here below that you'll see this bar. Uh, it turns a little darker gray here, and this is where you're going to click on this to submit your essay. You click on this bar and it takes you to turnitin.com. If you've looked at the assignment earlier and if you've looked at the video, you'll see you'll actually have a submit button since uh, I'm the teacher of the course. There's nothing here for me to grade. Uh, but it takes you to turn it in. So let me close that out and refresh it. So at the very bottom of the assignment, 
you'll see this bar and that is what you will use to click on and turn in your essay. Now the topics, and we're going to look at these, I'm going to uh, raise these up for us. Uh, first, you are to select only one of the different topics. Do not try to write about every single one of these. Um, last fall, I had a student, uh, when they wrote an essay for the course, try to answer each of the different topics uh, that she was given. Doing a you know, small paragraph over each one, I had to send her back a note saying that you know, this is not how you're supposed to do your assignment. Select one and write an essay. So you're going to select one of the topics and develop an essay. Uh, this essay is going to be over one of the ideas contained within chapters 11 through 15. Uh, it is supposed to be a, a well-detailed, focused essay, not just a summary. Um, it's going to be approximately 1,000 words. Uh, and yes, I also teach English, so I do expect our, our term here the hallmarks of good writing. Proper punctuation, proper grammar, proper mechanics, uh, sound organized writing, good transitions, proper MLA format. That means hit tab for each paragraph, double space the essay, have your citations done properly, and have a work side effect. So you're going to follow MLA standards, double space with proper citations. Now let me show you one other aspect here. In the instructions for the essay, the response must be approximately 1,000 words. Longer responses are acceptable. Must follow MLA format. Shorter responses, and those that do not follow MLA format, will not be graded. Um, if you don't present the essay in the proper way, and you do not try to develop it as you should, you're not going to receive a passing grade. Uh, the reason I've mentioned about Pages, PDF, and Google Docs uh, you can submit it as a PDF. Um, you can also submit it as a Google Docs uh, through Turnitin. But occasionally, the formatting of your essay gets shifted, especially with the Google Docs. It'll change it. It'll single space it, or something will happen. Uh, and if you use uh, an Apple product, a Mac, or uh, something along those lines, um, unfortunately, Pages and Turnitin do not get along, and it probably will not accept it as it should. When you type up, if you're using a Mac or if you're uh, using a, a, you know, an IBM clone, that's, that's no problem. What you want to do is save it as a Word document or save it as an RTF, rich text format. Uh, and that way when you upload it, it'll work fine. Uh, the Google Docs typically will work. Sometimes they do not. PDF almost always works, but on a few occasions, I've had some students when I've graded their essays and um, marked the situation because of formatting errors. Um, they've you know, told me, no, but I had it formatted right. It's just when it uploaded, this is what happened. So that's when I put the little PDF comment in here. And pages, as I said, pages do not always want to work too well. Um, but again, let's look at the topics. And so as you're working with these, uh, I cover a topic over each of the chapters usually a couple of top topics for each of the uh, five chapters that this covers, chapters 11 through 15. Uh, the first one is about the Black Death, uh, and I ask you to think about uh, how this uh, uh, has affected the populations in Europe during this time. We have just gone through a pandemic ourselves. We're still in a pandemic, technically, um, and so you can draw some parallels to the situation, and I think that would be a good way that you can conclude your essay would be to discuss uh, the contemporary pandemic and how it relates to what the population of the era of the Black Death, the Middle Ages, um, early Renaissance, what they suffered. In chapter 11, it also talks about the Gothic style. So I ask you to look instead um, at uh, what is called the Italian architectural style during this era because Gothic stayed more to the north. It really becomes a style to the north uh, in areas such as uh, France, the German states, uh, even England. But Italy itself did not really embrace the Gothic style so much. So I want you to discuss why uh, it doesn't. What is the difference between the, the styles? 
uh, the Gothic style and what the Italians stayed uh, true to. And uh, again, talk about very specific examples. Go through the textbook and other areas, and I'll show you those in just a moment. Go through the, the textbook and look at what those examples were uh, that were discussed in chapter 11. Uh, the next one moves you into another chapter. It talks about the Medici family. Um, and uh, they, of course, were uh, highly influential in Florence uh, in the 14th century and on. Um, and uh, after a while, though, they fell from favor, uh, and then they rose back again. So explore what happened to them. Uh, what did occur when they were no longer in control of Florence, how they were able to come back into power. Uh, and talk about their importance. Um, key aspect. You know, the De Medici family um, was a banking family, among other uh, of their uh, areas of, of influence. But they were one of the main banking families of the uh, medieval period and into the early Renaissance. Um, highly influential in that way. Um, established a number of precedents that are still followed today, such as checking accounts. Uh, loans, lines of credit, all sorts of aspects on those. So you look into those details. Some's mentioned in the book, some you'll have to, to do research of. Uh, in chapter 12, it also talks about Machiavelli. You're given a few excerpts from the prince. So I want you to look at what his advice was to a governor or a ruler. Um, the prince does not necessarily refer to just royalty, but can refer to anyone who is going to be in a position of power, of control. And look at what that advice states. Um, is it ethical? Argue whether it is or is not. Uh, is it practical? Um, can any state, as it says here, that follows such advice be successful? Uh, and again, discuss why or why not for each of these questions. And then discuss his view about humanity. Uh, is he a little pessimistic about how people are? Uh, or is it something else? And then explain those points, uh, which gives you a chance not only to, to discuss what Machiavelli presents in the book, but also to argue about that, to, to analyze it further. The next topic, as you look at painting styles, the Venetian style and the style that was used in Rome, they're very contrastive styles. Look at key examples and discuss those in detail talking about the use of figures, the use of themes, the subject matter, the colors, everything, scope, all those. Uh, discuss that aspect in the Venetian style and the style used in Rome. Um, look at the very key examples so that you can explain that. Um, also, uh, the next question focuses on Venice, highly influential uh, of this era, and uh, in this case, the Venetian school of composers. Um, and how they were influential with the direction that music would take. Um, and so um, are they really Renaissance composers, although they're in this time, the 1500s? Uh, or are they instead moving us to something else? Um, and so I want you to, to discuss that. Do you see them as Renaissance? What really qualifies um, music as Renaissance music? Uh, and discuss the history of that. The next topic focuses on uh, major figures in science, uh, Copernicus, Napier, Gilbert, and Harvey. And I want you to, to discuss two of these. Focus on two individuals. Uh, what's so important about them? What did they do? Uh, how did they influence uh, the study that we now call science, uh, especially as we know it now? Um, look at their examples, look at their details, discuss their writings, uh, that, you know, their publication about their, their, their views, and go into detail about that aspect. Uh, chapter, uh, the next chapter moves us into the Baroque, and uh, this particular uh, topic uh, looks at the views about the Baroque world, uh, and I want you to discuss music, art, architecture, and literature, so you have a little bit uh, of each of these areas to cover with specific in, uh, concepts about space that would be with art and architecture light that's going to be in art and architecture as well time uh, again emotion virtuosity all those are concerned especially with the, the last two with music and literature 
um, the first three more so with art architecture. Uh, if you watch the videos that are uh, posted for you uh, about the Baroque uh, art and, and style, um, it's a, a, a wonderful series uh, that's offered. Um, and uh, the one who uh, is the narrator for those offers you some wonderful insights and actually takes you to many of the locations to discuss the artwork and the other details that are there. Um, and so you can find that very useful. And again, in our textbook, we have quite a number of these uh, covered. So this would be something for you to look at. And then the last topic concerns the philosopher of Spinoza. Spinoza had a major influence on a number of areas, a uh, number of views, especially in his views about, as it says here, the nature of God and reality. So I want you to discuss partly in your essay about his life and the importance of his works, and then I want you to read his philosophical position. Uh, that's what metaphysics is, how he views the world, the nature of reality. And I want you to argue for or against. Do you believe he's right? Do you believe he's right in some ways, but wrong in others? Do you believe he misses something? So I want you to argue um, the, the view there. So about half the essay will be biography and details about his philosophy. And then the other half should be you discussing that philosophy, uh, which means you need to read some of his. So those are the topics. Um, and again, uh, you only select one, okay, not all of them. You're going to write about a thousand words, which is really not very long for this kind of essay. And in your search for information, uh, our library does a wonderful job of, of making available to you resources. So if you click here on this link to the library resources, this is what will pop up. And you can search here at the EBSCO Discovery. Uh, and if I put Spinoza, uh, you can see I've done this recently. And you click on it, it will then take you to a login. It will ask you to log in. And so you just have to log in. And I think I have to redo my login. And so then you just log in the same login you use to get into Canvas and your email. And then give it a moment, and it'll take you to what you were looking for. So again, give it just a moment as it's trying to log, uh, log me in and then search. Bear with me just a moment. It takes a little while. And here you go. Um, the very first one that comes up are basic concepts about Spinoza. Uh, it actually, the very first one that comes up is a research starter. Uh, this is almost always how EBSCO starts. It has this little detail. So if you just click on it, it goes into a very brief discussion about Spinoza, who he was, early life, and his philosophy. You'll see here's how it's set up. Uh, there it is, early life, details about that, his life's work what it involved, what his views involved, and then his significance, his importance. Uh, so you can get quite a bit of details from that one. And then if you go back, again, this one about basic concepts of Spinoza. This is actually an entire textbook. You click on it, and it'll call up the table of contents for you. You actually have to do the EPUB. And so the book is going to download. This is an entire textbook. And tell you about there you go. Let me do body map. And so you can actually download the full uh, full textbook. Let me go back to this aspect here. It tells you again all about, about his. Here's the, yeah, there it is. Introduction by uh, Campos. Again, notice this is what I was trying to get to. Uh, in his introduction, very uh, what Campos does for you is offer you some of the very key tenets, main points 
about um, Spinoza's philosophy right here. Key points here uh, that are offered. So that, that's very uh, useful where it's sort of laid out for you. Um, and again, you can look at other aspects. These are uh, each one of these, and this is the other part I want to show you. Each one of these you will note has a different author. Uh, these are actually different articles. Each one of these actually serves as a different source. And so uh, if I click on this one, this is about you know, his religious views about God uh, by Stephen Connolly. Uh, what you can do here is uh, the citation for it is here. Give just a moment because it's going to call this up. And so there's the site for the book. Uh, you want it for the uh, MLA. So you just go down here and find the MLA version. And you copy this and paste it. And then what you will put in front of this, and I'll show you how this does. If I copy this and paste it in a Word document, Again, bear with me as I have to call all this up. What I will want to do is not only cite this entire book, I want to cite the specific article that I use, and so I will then put this information uh, in front of this citation here. So, plain document. So I just paste it. I have to fix it just a little bit, and then I want to tab over. There's that one. And then what I want to put here, Connolly, Stephen. And then I want to put the title of the article, which God in the attributes. So that goes in quotation marks. That's it. Okay, then I have to fix it one more time. And there you go. And so this is how your uh, works cited page for this particular article will look. And then, of course, I want to entitle the page works cited. So that I've let me raise that up a little bit so you can see how that looks. So that's how that would look. And the reason this has all this blank space here, that's the URL, and it, it tries to keep it as, as full as it can together. So that's why it's not up here. Um, but there's your how you do a work side page for this particular article. Uh, so again, you can find quite a number of these articles about Spinoza or whatever else that you're looking for. Um, if you were going to do the, the Medici family, for instance. Uh, I can change this up here and put actually it's better to put Divinity. Yeah, there's about Lorenzo de Medici. Um, you can look at Cosimo de Medici, Catherine de Medici. Uh, those are all members of the family. Uh, so again, you can look at each of those. It'll give you some details for it. So when you go to the library resources, uh, you can go to this one. You can also use some of our research databases, which you'll find up here. Bear with me, sorry for that one. Um, if you look here, you'll see a number of different uh, topics that are available. Um, for instance, uh, you have... Uh, Religion and Philosophy Collection. If you click on it and type in Spinoza, you're going to get basically the same details you just did. And it'll take you to very similar ones. Um, but you'll see slightly different articles are here. Um, and you'll see that uh, they're, they're offered here for you under some of his views about monism, uh, his ethics, which is views about what is right and wrong. 
Now, if I go back here and I type in Machiavelli, excuse me, I'm trying to spell it right. Give me a chance. There we go. Machiavelli the Prince. I was trying to get it to spell it right. I kept waiting for it to pop up for me. But if you look here, here's that Machiavelli. Um, and this idea about reflections on power. Uh, you have the philosopher prince. This idea about views. Fear, love, and leadership. Uh, redeeming the meaning of the, of the prince. Um... And so you have perils of democratic governance. Uh, and so you have Machiavelli here and now, which is a very interesting uh, article uh, that discusses um, how Machiavelli principles are, can be applied or, or are used today. So again, a number of these articles here that you can find as well underneath these library resources. So these are some ones that you can look at. If you're looking for um, information about um, the... Uh, Black Plague, click on that again, bear with it just a moment, it takes a little while for this to call up, I'm doing this from home, my internet's a little slower, it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still not quite as, a, as a fast as it would be at home, uh, I mean at school, but again, the bubonic plague, uh, that's where it starts. And so, again, research starter here. Um, and you can look at this. Again, give it a moment as it calls us up. And it tells you about the details, the causes of it, the risk factors, symptoms, all these details. Uh, and if you want to do here, you go to an advanced search. And what this allows you to do is to fine tune it a little bit more. And so you want to put Middle Ages. Okay. And then search. And it'll narrow it down a little bit further. And so it gives you some details here. Uh, history of the plague in Europe. Uh, how that regards to COVID-19. Um, here's in the wake of the plague about the Black Death and the world it made that talk about its impact on, on the society. Again, this is a book. Um, you have uh, the idea about the four Black Deaths. You can look at those details there. Um, did medieval trade activity and a viral ideology control the spatial extent of seasonal distribution of Black Death mortality? So it looks at the idea about trade and how that impacted it. Uh, Arabic manuscripts talking about the uh, Black Plague. Um, so you have, and then this one about the Black Death itself. So you have a number of articles, if you'll notice, there are over a thousand. I'm not going to go to all of them. But there's no way you can look for information uh, to find details. Uh, if you go outside of our library, please make sure that you're looking at very uh, credible sources. Don't go for any, uh, just uh, Wikipedia should never be used for uh, research purposes. Just don't do that. Um, it's better to trust a .org as compared to a .com. Uh, if you use our library resources, these are credible sources because they've been uh, vetted for uh, inclusion into uh, either the EBSCO database or the Gale Group databases or, or other ones. So these are the ones that you can look at. And then also, as I said, um, if you want to use the details from the movies, uh, the, the, not movie, the videos that I posted for you, uh, you'll find those up here. Um, and you'll see uh, details here, and you can use some of those if you want to talk about uh, the comparison of the uh, uh, artwork and architecture uh, in different areas, such as in Italy. That's one of the topics. Uh, so you have that one. Uh, I don't think I had a video here. Well, I have a little bit um, about the Italian Renaissance. That, that does have one. Um, and then, 
in uh, chapter 15, I have the series of the Baroque uh, that discusses those. Uh, and again, these are really very good. Um, as I said, each one's about an hour. Uh, Valdemir Janusak, uh, I generally call him Molly, um, is very informative as he takes you to each of the different locations. You get to see the scope of the artwork much better than you would in the textbook. Um, he really goes into a number of details for you. And talks very specifically about key uh, artists uh, and the movements. Uh, and so, again, it's a series. If you click on this again, um, it'll ask you to log in to the system. Hopefully, I won't have to since I've already logged in. Yeah, I don't have to this time. Um, each one, as I said, is about an hour long. And, yeah, 59 uh, minutes. And you'll see he talks about different ones. And just give you an idea um, of what he looks at uh, very quickly. This is about the San Ignacio Church. Um, there's always this disclaimer. He has to move this one. Otso's first work in here was and this dark, illusionistic dome. Which, he takes you real into dome, the actual uh, site. You can see the work and the details of it. Uh, and so it's really very, very just highly interesting uh, when you look at it at the, these videos. And so you might find those useful if you're going to write about the Baroque as the topic uh, for your essay. You will find quite a bit of useful information there. So again, what you want to do is make sure that you've gone through the Start Here module to familiarize yourself with how to use Turnitin, how to submit the paper to Turnitin, you will also want to make sure you've read through the chapters carefully. Uh, then you come down and, again, review MLA formatting standards, watch the videos, um, and, again, look at the example so you see how your essay is supposed to look, and then choose your topic. And when you, you know, research and write your essay, come back here, click on this link, You can uh, download and print this out um, if you want to, or download to your computer so you don't always have to keep coming back to this to see the topics. And then, of course, when you get ready to upload it, you should click on that link, go here, click on this, and upload it to turn it in. So hopefully this has helped you. I'll be posting this uh, under the major essay. Uh, and uh, so again, when you come to the web page, click on e-courses. I'm sure some of you do it that way. You log in. I'm trying to show you how you get logged in here. Uh, you'll see your different courses pop up. Mine have quite a number of them. So then you click on our course and then here are the modules. And when you click on the uh, modules link here or you can go down here and click on major essays. It's supposed to take you straight to that one. Bear with just a moment. There you go. I will have this video posted here under the major essays. So hopefully this has helped you some. Uh, I'll get this posted uh, fairly soon, and I'll send an announcement out once it posts. Again, I'm looking forward to reading your essays. Please do not forget that by this evening, this is Monday, please do not forget that by this evening you need to make sure you have completed the second major exam.